Well, for decades, the idea of a flying car has been a media favorite. And from popular mechanics and science magazine covers to our own reports right here on CBS News, our John Blackstone has actually been covering the beat for years. And today, he has the latest look at the attempt to create a viable flying car. Marcus Ling calls his invention a personal aviation vehicle, an electric aircraft so easy to fly, he says, you need little training and no pilot's license. When you press the thumbstick to climb with this, you have absolute full control. Ling gave CBS This Morning an exclusive tour of the secret Silicon Valley facility where the craft he calls Blackfly is being built. His breakthrough invention... What we're going to do is we're just going to run... ...is a small but extremely powerful electric motor. This can produce 130... Lang claims the eight-motor, single-seat aircraft has actually flown thousands of miles in test flights controlled from the ground before they ever put people in the cockpit. We first flew 10,000 miles. We did 1,000-plus uh, flights. All autonomous. Autonomous, okay. and uh, we had a payload of 200 pounds. So what are the safety features? Have? First of all, you have to start off with the technology and some magic buttons like a return-to-home button for people who fly for the first time. For decades, flying cars have been part of a future that has never quite arrived. So this was the commuter. This was have been the helicopter in everybody's garage. The Hiller Aviation Museum in Silicon Valley displays several flying cars that just didn't get off the ground. The technology wasn't there because they didn't have the computers. And now the computers can actually manipulate the controls. Now, companies around the world are developing flying cars. Google co-founder Larry Page is supporting two flying car projects. Uber is working on flying taxis. Marcus Lang wants Blackfly to be on sale next year, so anyone can buy it. What are we talking? Price of a luxury Mercedes? Price of an SUV. Price of an SUV. How long will it take to learn to fly one of these? You know, in the simulator, in five minutes. Alan Eustace, former vice president of knowledge at Google, is on Blackfly's board of directors and knows about flight. He was carried by balloon into the stratosphere, then parachuted nearly 136,000 feet, breaking a world altitude record in 2014. He's almost as excited about Blackfly. And I've noticed in my career that things go from impossible to inevitable in a very short period of time. It's no longer technology standing in the way, he says, but rather regulations governing flight. There's regulatory issues to deal with, but, you know, in theory right now, you could take this vehicle, you could put it out here, you could fly it to San Francisco, and you could be there in, you know, eight minutes. Under current federal regulations, Blackfly is classified as an ultralight aircraft, meaning it can't fly at night or over urban areas. It can travel just 25 miles on its electric batteries. But the joy of flight... That was great. <laughs> ...seems unlimited. They're just incredibly fun to fly. Instant gratification. Wow! <laughs> and John Blackstone joins me now from San Francisco. John, you've been covering flying cars for nearly a decade. I'm sorry, we just couldn't resist. We had to open up the CBS News vault, <laughs> and we had to pull this clip from More 1988. More than a decade. <laughs> You're right, if you do the math. It's more than a decade. It's two decades. Uh, I want to actually pull a, a clip from the evening news from back then to show folks just how long you've been covering this. One of the stars of this year's Philadelphia Auto Show is not an automobile at all, but a flying saucer. It's one of those American dreams that just won't go away behind every garage door. Not a car, but a personal flying machine. It's a dream more widely pursued than you might imagine. If Detroit thinks it has problems with Japanese imports, wait till some of these come on the market. Uh, who is that guy there, John Blackstone? Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it was so great to see you there. How far have we come, though, since what, uh, you know, Marcus Lang's invention of, of trying to differentiate himself from others? How has that attempt gone? Well, computers have made a big difference, and Marcus Lang's development of this very small, powerful engine, uh, power, powerful electric engine has, has made the big difference. He was working on paper uh, nine years ago and he did some calculations 
given the technology that was available, and he said, no, this can't be right. I can't get this much power out of a small engine. Did the calculations another way. It looked like it was right. He did the calculations again. He said, I can do this. Nobody believed him. For, for, for nine years now, he's been working on this, and he's developed this very powerful engine. You, you put that, this very powerful electric motor, you put that together with the battery technology we have today, that's what makes this possible. Yeah, that's the great thing about innovation. It's impossible until someone actually makes it happen, and then everyone's a believer. But what I don't understand, John, is that, you know, Lang believes that the, the vehicle might be priced at your average SUV. I actually think that it would be more expensive for something like this. How is he able to get to that price point? Well, one of the things to realize about this is that in many ways it's easier to build this aircraft than it is to build a car. There's these eight motors on it and there's some batteries. That's, that's it. It's a very simple uh, construction. One of the problems with flying cars has been that they've been very complicated, trying to make something that's both a car that drives along the road and then, you know, flips out some wings or something like this and, and, and can fly. That's a very complicated proposition. That's why the people who are looking at flying cars now really don't call them flying cars anymore. They're aerial vehicles. They're going to take off and land in one spot. You won't have to drive to an airport or something like that. Uh, the price point, I think Leng, this will be the price of an expensive SUV, I think, <laughs> to begin with. SUVs come in a big price range. This will be the price of an expensive SUV to begin with. But the price, the idea is the price will come down mm. over time. This shows that it's that is possible. You know, we've seen the auto industry focus more on self-driving vehicles in recent years. Do you think that this concept of a flying car has a place in the future? And is it something that car companies should focus on developing? Well, whether it's car companies or, or aircraft companies or completely independent companies like Opener, which is Lang's company that's building the Black Fly, uh, this is technology that is here now. It's the same technology, really, that goes into flying, that goes into uh, self-driving cars. I did the first self-driving car story uh, in 2005, the first really successful self-driving car, 2005, 13 years ago. It seemed like a distant dream at that time. Now, on the streets in San Francisco, we see these cars being tested all the time. You probably do there in New York and many other cities across the country. This is, has become a reality in 13 years, but it's much the same technology that can go into self-flying aircraft. This aircraft was flown autonomously for 10,000 miles. They can, they can fly it by computer. You don't have to have somebody in it, but of course the joy is to be able to get into something like this and mm. fly it. You know, Lang says he wants this to be on the market in under a year, but you know there are so many regulatory hurdles, plus the battery only can get 25 miles per charge. How does he intend to overcome these obstacles? Well, what this aircraft does is personal aerial vehicle does is fit into current regulations uh, for ultralight aircraft. An ultralight, you don't need a pilot's license uh, to fly it, but it has to weigh less than 254 pounds. It has to have a range. This is where the regulations are now. It has to, it has to carry, carry only five gallons of gas. Of course, this plane has no gas tank on it, it just has batteries, but basically they have to fit into that same uh, range uh, level for, uh, for ultralight vehicles, regulations for ultralight vehicles. You can't fly this over a city right now. You, you, um, there are regulations, but this has been designed to fit into those regulations and then hoping that the regulations can be expanded so that once this technology is proven, again, much like self-driving cars. A couple of years ago, you couldn't have yeah. self-driving cars on public roads. Regulations have caught up. Now you can. Mm, such a good point. Boy, will I be the coolest mom driving up to soccer practice in one of these, John? <laughs> Hope there's... Uh, you will be. You won't be able to take, take your kid, though, because there's only one seat. Okay. Well, there you go. John Blackstone, great report. Thank you.